Hello and welcome to Life Admin 365 and welcome to today's video. Once again, I'm sharing with you my weekly meal plan and meal prep from Monday to Saturday. Most of these are lunches and a few dinners here and there. So let's get started. On Sunday morning, after having a hearty breakfast of okar prepared by Milim, Amit and I stepped out for a weekly Indian grocery and also to buy a few other items considering that Diwali was just 10 days away. This time, along with making traditional poha chivda, I was planning on making makhna chivda as well. Little did I know at the time that all my plans would change within a few days. Anyways, as soon as we got home, we put things away in the refrigerator or freezer. Then all of us started working on prepping the veggies. Aditya peeled one large garlic bulb. Melinda and Amit picked cilantro leaves and then the three of them picked on methi leaves. In that time, I kept eggs for boiling and curdled whole milk to prepare paneer. I used 6 tablespoons of lemon juice to curdle about 3 liters of full fat milk. In addition, I also added half a cup of full fat yogurt and 2 tablespoons of ghee to increase the richness of this paneer. Strained out the paneer from whey and used the whey to knead roti dough. After heating frozen parathas for lunch, I started prepping remaining veggies. Diced onions, rinsed and dried and thinly sliced only, removed skin and cubed pumpkin, picked and de-stringed gavar, rinsed and dried it, de-stemmed green chilies, separated cauliflower florets and rinsed and dried them. I was going to prep dudhi in a couple of days as I needed it to be in the shredded form and I wasn't comfortable shredding dudhi so much in advance. Before calling it a night, I soaked one cup of moong dal for next day's meal. With veggies prepped along with other essentials, I was prepared for the upcoming week. One day, I prepared moong dal varan and cauliflower bhaji. Prepared basic tadka in hot oil, cumin seeds, freshly pressed garlic, onions and sauteed these for a couple minutes. Then added tomato puree and sauteed for another minute. Covered and cooked for a couple more minutes. Then added a blend of cilantro, cilantro stems and green cheese and sorted everything well. When most of the moisture evaporated, added soaked moong dal. I had rinsed the dal several times before it adding it to this masala. Then added turmeric, red chili powder, salt and thoroughly mixed the dal and the masala. Then added approximately 1.5 cups of warm water and mixed everything well. Covered and moved the spot from the front burner to the back one. Dal was cooking on medium low heat on the back burner. I started preparing cauliflower bhaji on the front one. Placed stainless steel pan on medium heat and added about one and a half tablespoons of avocado oil. When oil was hot, lowered heat and added one fourth teaspoon of mustard seeds, one fourth teaspoon of cumin seeds, couple of pinches of hing, and one eighth teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. Added the same blend of green chili, cilantro, and cilantro stems that I used for making the varan. Sorted masala on medium low heat, then added about 2 tablespoons of crushed tomatoes and sorted the pan contents well. Then added half a teaspoon of turmeric to the masala and mixed everything well. Then added cauliflower florets and mixed them with the masala. Covered pan and increased heat to medium and kept it for cooking for about 3 to 4 minutes. Uncovered and checked on moong dal cooking on the back burner. We like moong dal with a slight bite instead of it being very well cooked. Turned off the heat, covered and let the residual heat finish off the cooking. Coming back to cauliflower bhaji. Uncovered pan, added salt to taste and mixed it well with cauliflower florets. Scrape the juicy burnt bits from the bottom and mix them with the florets. I love how it burns slightly on the bottom. In my opinion, this slight burn offsets the inherent pungent smell of cauliflower. Anyways, cook it to your liking. Covered and cooked on medium heat for about 3 to 4 more minutes. Uncovered, added finely chopped cilantro and gave everything a good mix. Turned off heat covered and moved the bhaji to the trivet. Garnished moong dal with finely chopped cilantro and mixed everything well. With dal and bhaji done, started preparing roti. And that's it. Dinner on most Monday nights is plant-based burgers. Before closing night for kitchen, pressure cooked half a cup of tur dal for tomorrow's meal. Moving on to Tuesday. It's idli sambar and chutney for lunch. Tur dal was already pressure cooked and ready to be made into sambar. But before that, portioned out half of it in glass container and stored it in the freezer for later use. Mashed up the remaining half portion of dal. To it added 1 4 teaspoon of turmeric, salt to taste and hing. Mix spices very well with the mashed up dal. Then added about half a teaspoon of tamarind concentrate to the spiced up mashed dal. Mixed everything well and thinned it out slightly with water. Placed a pot on medium heat and transferred this prepared dal into it. Rinse the dal container with water and transfer the rinse in the pot as well. While dal was heating up, 
started preparing tadka for sambar placed a small tadka pan on medium heat and to it added oil once the oil was hot enough added half a teaspoon of mustard seeds half a teaspoon of cumin seeds and when they crackled turned off the heat then added two dried and broken red chilies followed by a sprig of curry leaves and 1/4 teaspoon of urad dal added this tadka to hot dal hot oil and water is a deadly combination and one needs to be careful when adding the tadka in such a fashion anyways added about 2 tablespoons of sambar masala and about 1 cup of water stirred it well and let sambar simmer then started preparing idli this is when the ready made dosa mix comes handy use my idli steamer and my favorite vijay brand idli dosa batter to make these idlis while water was heating up in the steamer i oiled the idli trays then placed one tray in the steamer ladled the slots with idli batter and repeated the process until all four trays were filled covered the steamer with lid and steamed for 12 minutes on medium high heat while idlis were steaming i quickly prepared coconut chutney with green chilies and cilantro this came out to perfection it was well browned and needed no adjustment for taste once steaming was done I took out the trays and scooped out the pillowy rounds using butter knife. I only scooped out idlis from one tray. Rest of the idlis was scooped out by Milind. Milind also packed idlis for boys school lunch. Amit likes to take it plain while Aditya likes to eat with ketchup, sachets of which I packed in his lunch box. For dinner I had paneer bhurji on the menu. To prepare I placed pan on medium heat and to it added 2 tablespoons of avocado oil and 1 tablespoon of ghee. Once ghee had melted and oil ghee blend was hot enough, I added one tablespoon of cilantro, cilantro stem, and ginger blend. Moved it around the pan until it sizzled. To it added freshly crushed garlic cloves. Four large cloves gave about one tablespoon of crushed garlic. Mixed it well with the pan contents. Then added one and a half cups of diced onion and sauteed them. Did all of this while the gas was still on medium heat. Then added dry spices. Half a teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of red chili powder, and one fourth teaspoon hing. Mix these well with the pan contents. Then added tomato puree. This puree is from tomatoes grown in my home garden. These are the last of the tomatoes of the season. Anyways, mixed it well with the masala in the pan. Once it was well incorporated, covered and cooked on medium heat for about two to three minutes. Once oil started separating, uncover the pan and mix the contents once more. Then crushed about two tablespoons of kasuri methi in my palms and added it to the masala, followed by the addition of half a teaspoon of salt. Thoroughly combined the contents and simmered masala for a minute. Then added homemade crumbled paneer, which was close to two cups. Mixed it well with the masala and, when well combined, covered and simmered for two to three minutes. Added one teaspoon of garam masala and finely chopped cilantro leaves. Mixed everything well and it was ready. perfect consistency to our liking served it along with warm naan dippers or mini naans that i got from costco moving on to wednesday for lunch i had palak varan and tonli bhaji on menu started with preparing palak varan placed pot on medium low heat and added oil to it when oil was hot added 1/4 teaspoon mustard seeds and 1/4 teaspoon cumin seeds then added 1/3 cup of diced onions and sauteed everything well then added turmeric red chili powder stirred it and then added two finely chopped green chilies mixed everything well then added about half a cup of chopped spinach and mixed once again then added salt and mixed to everything once more turned the heat to medium low covered and cooked for about 2 minutes uncovered mixed once and then added cooked dal it hadn't fully thawed but that's what i had and that's what i worked with rinsed the dal container with water and added that water to the dal used about 1 and 1/2 cups of water in total added a couple of amsul pieces for tanginess and stirred in the contents moved the pot from front burner to the back and let dal simmer placed kadhai on the front burner on medium heat and to it added oil when oil was hot enough added 1/4 teaspoon mustard and 1/4 teaspoon cumin seeds few curry leaves finely chopped cilantro stems and four finely chopped green chilies then added turmeric and sliced thonli mixed everything well increased heat to medium covered and cooked for 3 to 4 minutes i forgot to record this step uncovered then added 1/4 teaspoon salt and two heaping tablespoons of roasted and crushed peanuts mixed everything well and then added chopped cilantro gave everything a thorough mix and bhaji was ready then prepared rotis once again in rush i didn't get a chance to plate the entire meal for presentation purposes 
During lunch break, I came home and soaked dals and rice for preparing hanbo as it was on my meal plan for tomorrow. So quickly recorded a segment for the same. In evening, I headed to gym for my class and while my body was exercising, my mind was anguished by the message that my sister sent me regarding my father being in ICU. I couldn't hold it and the dam just broke and everything just spilled out. I was still in days as I prepared dinner, which was quick egg curry. Didn't record any of the preparation. This egg curry meal is from one of my earlier meal preps and is a representative of the meal that I made that day. Once decision to go home was made and India tickets were booked for Sunday, I calmed down a little bit, but unsavory thoughts kept on assaulting my mind. While I just wanted to sit down and do nothing, I still needed to take care of the soaking dals and prepare meals for the remaining days. Following my routine is what kept me going in this most stressful and overwhelming time and i still had to go to work next day so i did what my plan called for took care of the meals and meal preparation so what i did was ground rice and dals for handbo kept batter for fermenting dosa and followed my night routine moving on to thursday started preparing pumpkin bharit or pumpkin bharta placed pan on medium heat and added two tablespoons of ghee once ghee melted and was hot enough added half a teaspoon of cumin seeds when these sizzled, added four finely topped green chilies and stirred them in around the pan. Then added one inch freshly grated ginger and mixed it well. Then added previously prepared pumpkin cubes and mixed them well with ghee tadka. Covered and cooked on medium heat for about two minutes. Uncovered, added pink salt and mixed well. If I were making pumpkin bhaji, I would have turned off heat at this point. But since I was aiming for making bharta consistency, I covered pan once more and cooked for another two minutes. Uncovered, mixed ones and turned off heat. Added 2 tablespoons of roasted and crushed peanuts and finely chopped cilantro and mixed well. Once it cooled down completely, only then added about 3 tablespoons of yogurt and mixed it well. Pumpkin bharta was ready. Transferred it to a container. Will prepare upwas dosa when I get home for lunch. To prepare dosas, I first started by heating electrical griddle at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. To my Vitamix blender jar, I added half a cup of water followed by soaked sabudana. One cup of raw sabudana gave close to two cups of fully soaked sabudana. Then added three-fourth cups of samu rice. Samu does not swell as well as sabudana. Then added two teaspoon cumin seeds and pink salt and blended to form a smooth batter. Batter was very thick so added another one-fourth cup of water. By this time, griddle was hot and ready. Poured batter directly from the blender and spread it in a circular fashion. Unlike rice dosa batter, sabudana batter is sticky and resulting dosas can become slightly stiff if you keep them on the griddle for a long time. Made four dosas and served them with previously prepared coconut green chili, cilantro lime chutney and pumpkin raita prepared in morning. Then headed back to school. For dinner, I prepared hanbo. I have already shared hanbo preparation details in a separate video. Sharing that video link in a card above and in the description box below so do check it out i also used up methi leaves and prepared methi bajra paratha dough for later use moving on to friday i simply reheated previously prepared and frozen black chana and served them with store-bought rotis on ashtami i had prepared suji halwa and black chana sharing that recipe preparation from that particular day which i never got a chance to share earlier here are the ingredients that i use for preparing dry chana overnight soaked and pressure cooked black chana look at how perfect Perfectly, these are pressure cooked. Let's look at the wet and the dry spices. Oil as a medium for preparing masala. Four green chilies finely cut. One tablespoon freshly grated ginger. One tablespoon cumin seeds. One large bay leaf broken into pieces. Spice blend prepared by mixing. 2 tablespoons freshly roasted and ground coriander seeds, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, half a teaspoon pink salt, 1 4 teaspoon black pepper powder, 1 4 teaspoon garam masala, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, half a teaspoon amchur powder, finely chopped cilantro and pink salt to adjust the taste in the end. To prepare, place a pot on medium heat and add oil about 3 tablespoons. Flavor oil with broken bay leaf and stir it around. Then add cumin seeds and green chilies and mix well. Then add ginger and stir the contents well. Turn heat to lowest setting and only then add the spice blend. It is important to lower heat in order to avoid dry spice blend from burning. A lot of recipes also call for soaking this blend in water but I have never done it that way. I will try doing it that way the next time. Roast spices on gentle heat for about a minute or two. Then add pressure cooked black chana and mix them well with spice masala. Rinse chana bowl with about half a cup of water and add it to pot and mix everything well. Increase heat to medium, cover and simmer for 3-4 to four 
4 minutes. Uncover, mix well, season with pink salt as needed, add in chopped cilantro, give everything a final mix and it is ready. Serve with warm puris or rotis along with cucumber raita for a filling lunch. Friday dinner was takeout pizza from our local pizza place. I also started a massive meal prep session so that my family had plenty of food in my absence. I will share that video once I return from my India trip. Before going to sleep, I took out pressure cooked and frozen whole masoor from freezer to thaw out for tomorrow's meal. For Saturday's lunch, I prepared valpapri bhaji, masoor amti, rice and roti. I wanted to use up all my previously prepared and frozen veggies or dals or rice or whatever was remaining and use it up so that I had plenty of space in my freezer and refrigerator for the dozens of meals that I was going to prepare for them during my absence. For dinner, we heated up frozen gobi parathas along with yogurt and ketchup. I hope you liked today's video. I've shared a vulnerable part of my story. So do be kind in your words in the comment section should you choose to comment. Do give this video a like if you've liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already for more such meal plan and meal prep videos. Be back with a new video soon.